I didn't. Okay, sorry, we had a question in the back there. Yeah, I have a question, just one question. It has 27 parts, so it's going to take a while. But... Can we do this in the pub? <laughs> no, no. Um, well, how much money do these creepy European businessmen leave town with? And when was the last time the men's 100 meter final was won by someone who was probably creepy? So, kind of two questions. So. To take the second point, um, I don't know about Mr. Bolt in Beijing. Yeah, I that's, don't a, that's, know. A, that's a tough one, isn't it? Uh, yeah. And I think you've got to you've got to give them the benefit of the doubt, yeah, yeah. as in any any case, any criminal case, anything. You shouldn't say things unless you can prove them. Yeah. And I'm not aware of any proof. And we've got to run with the fact that he is a fantastic athlete. Yes, yeah. And so we're not let down. Because of the IOC's history, we're asking these questions. And think of the endurance events that are coming up uh, in, in Vancouver or up at Whistler next year. Because it's the endurance events particularly where the doping goes on in, uh, in the winter sports. And if you've got some fantastic cross-country events, you're going to be wondering if they're on the source. It shouldn't be like that. If the IOC had gone after the dope business instead of you know encouraging it, I don't think we'd have the dope problems. We'd have crushed the bastards, the dope doctors. Only they're still talking about, oh maybe we should put them in prison. Jesus, they've been at it for thirty odd years that we know of. Um, and there's nothing like, you know, doing a bit of time with really low class people who tend to be in the same cell to uh, have a quite a reformist uh, effect. What was your first question? I was just wondering what's, you know, kind of what, how much money the IOC makes at an event like the Winter Olympics. What, what are they, the, what, uh, what's the take home pay for <coughs> well, two weeks work here? You know? You'd have, uh, I don't know the answer on that because I never believe their numbers anyway, so I don't waste a lot of time uh, trying to write down what their numbers are until such time later. You see, often they put out conflicting press statements because they're not very bright, so you come back later. And see if the figures have changed. There will be what they call a surplus. Let's not have talk of profit, please. Profit? That's such an ugly word, isn't it, in some quarters. Let's call it a surplus. And under the enlightened patronage of Mario Vasquez Rania, the press baron from Mexico, and that just about says it all, doesn't it? Um, there will be distribution to national Olympic committees around the world, and there will be no vote buying. Uh, for nanoseconds. The whole, the whole Olympic solidarity thing has been a racket since they cranked it up. Once the money started coming in under the Samarang Dassler operations, then obviously you've got to distribute. You know, you have to, you just got to because, uh, you know, the natives, and I mean the natives of every country, every national Olympic committee is going to be causing trouble to give them some money and they're happy. Um, what one would like to do is audit it country by country, but that's not practical. But separately, you see, you know, you, your media, congratulations to your local media, have already started to tell you about the lifestyle that the IOC will have. Um, well, that's money that isn't going to pay for kids in whatever continent, a long way from here, you want to think of, or uh, going to encourage sport among the very sad people in the downtown. Mm -hmm. So, you know, once they've made a very nice living for themselves, sure, you've got to give the rest of it away. You do it through Mario Vasquez, and isn't he, Steph, just a person to be looking at? I'm hoping that now he's given the Pan Ams to Toronto, that some of the Toronto reporters will find some Spanish-speaking reporters to start to look at how did Mario get so rich from having started out so poor. But that's a whole other story. I know that we're getting uh, over time here. Maybe Wonderful posters which I showed earlier. Okay, it's probably your last question here. Go ahead. Are you still banned by the IOC? No, they uh, banned me in 1992 when they launched the rings and the accompanying uh, film which showed photographs of Sarang in the funny clothes. Did you show up in February and have a look? Oh, well, that ran until 1990, end of 1990, into 1999. Um, Salt Lake had burst the drugs thing, the Festina cycling scandal, you know, burst the dam on doping and cycling, long overdue, but it had. And I'm working for BBC, I'm working with the Wall Street Journal, I'm working for Danish television. I can't remember how many people I was streaming for. 
I think I did, I did about 300 media interviews in about six weeks because suddenly all the reporters have got to find, you know, got to find something out. I'd written the books. And so the I.O. I mean, if they had, they, they were not so stupid as to ban me then. I remember, Steph, you know, Kevin Gosper, that pompous ch skirt chaser from Australia. Um, he doesn't like being reminded of that. You can do it quite, quite safely, actually. If you know the right way, he's not going to sue. Um, I remember Kevin, who's an extremely pompous man, who never got over his silver medal in the 400 metres in Melbourne in the 56, though I'd like to remind him of it now and again, because he was the fastest in the world then. In the uh, IOC members' bar in the Lausanne Palace Hotel, I remember him saying to me, I let you in, Andrew. I, I decided to readmit you. And I said, when did you ever say no to the Wall Street Journal or the BBC? <laughs> so they did But yeah, they let me back in, and uh, you can see me questioning Rog about the bagman if you look on my website. Um, I actually started, started the question badly. I was changing track within the question. But nevertheless, you could see uh, Rog trying to be ironic. Yes, Andrew, we've missed you. We haven't seen you for this long time. Cheeky <laughs> bastard. Anyway, yes, are we going to the pub? Where's the pub? Where's the pub? Every journalist needs a pub. Love is more.